Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 it's after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun Moses assistant saying Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan and you and all the people to the land which I am giving to them the children of Israel every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you as I said to Moses from the wilderness and its Lebanon and as far as the great river the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites, the great sea, toward, going down, toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for this is the people you shall divide as an inheritance, the land which I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded. You do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen and amen. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Let's get into this. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for this word that you give us, Lord. You're calling every single person in this room Lord, to rise up, to live in a new dimension, Lord, to live in the fullness of your spirit, to do your work, Lord, to proclaim your gospel, to pronounce your truth to this nation, to the nations, Lord. Father, I ask in Jesus' name, take away every argument, every fear, everything that rises up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and that your truth, Lord, will set those who are captive free in this place, that your truth will bring healing in their physical area, in their spiritual area, even in the material area, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord. You are the God of the same that is yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. You heal, you prosper, you deliver, Lord Father. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray. Amen and amen. This is a great word in Joshua. And um, it's a good word in a very bad situation. Because uh, someone has just died. I don't know how many of you have ever lost someone or anyone died close to you. But for Joshua, this is more or less his father has just died. That would probably be the comparison. The person he most loved, the person he most trusted, the person who he always followed, the, the, his mentor, his leader, I don't know how any other way I could explain it to you. This is someone close to him. And God speaks to him. God says to him directly, he says to him, Moses, my servant, is dead. So Joshua, this is the first thing he's like directly saying, there is something that's happened here, Joshua. You've lost someone. But he begins to say, arise, get up. I love this word because it speaks even today to our lives in so many ways. When I was asking God, what do you want to speak today? There was something that he said to me on the 23rd of April. And I wrote this down. It's a prophecy that God gave to me uh, in a in time of devotion in the morning. And he, said, he said it like this. Listen carefully. Rise up, rise up. I have begun a new work in you. The change I desire is always from your heart. Rise up, rise up. I called you for this time and for this nation. Rise up, rise up. For, my, for many need to hear the message that I have. This is your time. Rise up, rise up. I was on the 23rd of April that the Lord said to me. And when I read this word, one of the things that stood out is what God says to Joshua. Arise, get up. Don't stay in the place that keeps you discouraged. Don't remain in the situation that's holding you down. Don't let the words or the search of the people around you that are trying to hold you down keep you there. Rise up. God had to directly speak to Joshua. Now, I love that. You need to connect directly with God. Not, not just listening to what we say here on a Saturday or listening to something on a Sunday. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. With God, you connect and He will say to you, get up, rise up, change. It is time. He will lift you. He will give you a direct word for the time that you are living in. Don't let what other people say influence you at the end. This is what God says. It's great that you've got good spiritual leaders, that you've got good pastors in the church, and they will bless you, they will encourage you. But at the end of the day, you need to get a word from God, and that is the one that's going to direct your life. Amen? Arise. 
This is a good thing. Yes, death had come in, discouraged him, but he knew he had something to do. There were people who were depending on him. Listen to me carefully, if there are people depending on you. You may say, but I'm only 13, I'm only 12, I'm only 17, I'm only 18. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 12 year olds, 10 year olds, 9 year olds can have a great influence on people. They can have such an amazing, powerful influence on people. I see my daughter, she sometimes says amazing things about God. It influences, it blesses me. How much more you, who know Jesus Christ, if you know that He died for you, if you know that He saved you, if you know that He's redeemed you, if you know that He has a purpose for you, when you share something to someone else, it blesses them. Rise up. Don't let your age hold you back. Don't let your nationality hold you back. Don't let your language hold you back. If it's only in Spanish, then share the gospel in Spanish. If it's in English, then share the gospel in English. But don't let anything stop you from sharing it. Because there are so many people needing it here. You can share it in so many ways. Rise up. And God says to Joshua, it's time to get over the circumstances, over the things that, that are holding you. I am calling you. God is calling you. Tell the person next to you, God is calling you. And tell him with authority and tell him with conviction. God is calling you. And when God is calling, he, he tells them, he gives them a very specific, look at the next thing he says. He says, go over the Jordan. Now listen, God has a specific place that he wants to use you in. Specific areas. Some of you heard me recently, I was sharing about urban missionaries. And if you don't know, you've got to come to the one for four meetings. You've got to come to those meetings where we share about these things. Urban missionaries, prepare to share the gospel in different places. You know, you've got, you, you've got to think, Lord, where is it that you want to use me? And I said, Lord, there's Filipinos, there's Polish, there's so many in this, in this, in this wonderful city. And then we were just sharing with an Egyptian guy. He told me a joke. Can I hear a joke? Yeah. yeah it's a funny joke, but um, if it's, it's cross culture, so let's see if it works. He said to me, uh, a guy, a guy used to live next to a, a man who owned a dog, and this dog would bark, and especially bark every time this man would come across. And so this man was always scared of the dog. He was always like scared. He was a nervous wreck. He was like completely always shaking because of the dog. So he goes up to the owner after years of being harassed by the dog. He says, "Please get rid of this dog." And the guy says to him, "Okay." So I'll kill him. I'll get rid of him. I'll kill him. And he did. And that night, the guy went to his bed. The one that was always shaking and nervous. And said, finally, I'm going to get some peace. And then all of a sudden, he hears like loads of dogs barking. He says, what's going on? And he hears them all coming from next door. So he runs out, knocks on the neighbor's door, and he says to him, how come there's more dogs barking now? He says, how come there's loads of dogs barking next door? Well, you don't understand that one dog control all those other dogs from barking. So one was barking, but now because that one you killed, these other 50 dogs are barking to make all that noise. You didn't get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this, this is what the Egyptians and Egyptians are, so you have to kind of think man. He was saying to me, this is very interesting, in Egypt this is the problem. He says that this, you know, you, you, you seen the problem in Egypt? See the problem that is happening? This, what's the guy, what's the president of Egypt called, the guy who just fell? Mubarak, Mubarak, and he's saying Mubarak is fallen. Listen carefully. Okay, catch this. Mubarak is fallen, but all these other bad guys have risen up now. So he controlled all the bad guys. He controlled all the Islamic extremists and everything. And he let the Christians worship God. And now in Egypt, it's really difficult to worship God. There even three churches were burned this week. Three Christian churches were burned in Egypt. He said, one bad dog was controlling all the bad dogs. Now we have no bad dog, and everyone's running around crazy. So he says, it's a really difficult time. Guys, we, we need to share the gospel to some, to some strange and different cultures sometimes. And I, I give thanks. I mean, I was uh, with the Nigerians uh, the other day, and they're very tough. They sound almost rude and arrogant when they talk to you, but they're actually being very nice. So don't, don't take it wrong when you talk with a Nigerian, yeah? They actually, yeah, hey, it's like, and it's actually being nice. Leave your kids alone. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. But that's what I love about London. You, you see so many cultures. It's just, you know, with the Japanese, it's completely a different thing. Anyway, God says to Joshua, I've got a specific vision and purpose and place that I want to use you. Go over the Jordan, get over the obstacles, start moving. I have a plan, I have a purpose. 
But he doesn't say to him to go alone. He says, take the people. He didn't want him to be discouraged to remain in that same place. He wanted him to take the people with him. God has called you to take others. God has called, this is a wonderful thing about the church. We are called to make disciples. We're called to bring other people along in this. God has said to you, this is a time for affirming your steps. Well, you know what? You're, you're, you're the most important act of the change and correction and build up and edification happens in your discipleship. That is in your soul group. That is with your leader. Discipleship isn't just miracles or pastor del mundo, pastor del mundo, preaching from the pulpit. Yeah, that was a great discipleship. No. Discipleship is one-on-one. -on -one. How are your finances? 